Good afternoon. Welcome to Sacred Hearts Parish. We welcome those present here at church and also those attending mass via live stream at home. My name is Caroline Clark. My sister Julia and I will be your lectors today. We gather today as a community of believers to celebrate God's great gifts to us, God's word and the Eucharist. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent. Our presider is Father John and our mass intention is for William Bateman. Today we hear the story of the transfiguration. Jesus, for a brief moment, appears on a mountain in dazzling white, seen in his full glory, a glory somewhat hidden by his ordinary human nature. The words God speaks during this time should be familiar to us, as we heard them just a few weeks ago when we read of Jesus' baptism. This is my son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. A passage like today's reminds us that the veil between heaven and earth is one that prevents us from seeing God and the things of God in their clarity, but God always sees us. May we see with clear eyes that God is always watching, waiting with immense love for us to return to his gaze. Let us now stand and give praise and glory to our God. Our opening song is number 598, Christ Be Our Light, number 598. Welcome in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. A special welcome today for two groups here with us at this 4 o'clock Mass. All my friends from Hibernians in Lawrence, Division 8, Ancient Order of Hibernians, welcome. I'm their chaplain, and they're also here for the installation of officers after Mass today. So welcome to Sacred Hearts Parish. And also, we had a retreat day for our freshmen, half of our freshman class for confirmation on 40 kids. So they did very well today with Elizabeth, our pastoral associate as leader in our catechist, who gave their day to the kids. So thank you, catechist, for being here. So welcome, boys and girls, today. So we gather here, my friends, this second Sunday of Lent to praise God, to thank God for all the blessings of life we also come with our faults and our failures in our hearts to receive God's blessing, God's peace. It's now pause, call to mind our sins, and welcome God's mercy into our life today. God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. 
Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, Jesus, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, may you rejoice to behold your glory in our lives. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us now be attentive to God's word. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took Abram outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O oh Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all these, split them in two, and placed each half opposite the other. But the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped them. When the sun had set and it was dark, there appeared a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch, which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Join with others in being imitators of me, brothers and sisters, and observe those who thus conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, as I have often told you, and now tell you even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach, their glory is in their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord. The word of the Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Again, good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you all today as we come here on this second Sunday of Lent to continue our journey of this holy season. And the question for all of us today is, how are you doing? Have you changed some aspect of your life, your attitudes, to reflect where you are now in this season of Lent? Or do you still need a little encouragement to, to get going, okay? And today's gospel story, we all know, is known as the Transfiguration. And we hear this gospel proclaimed every second Sunday of Lent every year. Today is Luke's version of the gospel. In years past, we hear Matthew and Mark. But today, this year, it's Luke. And it reminds me, when I read this each year, of that beautiful masterpiece of work by Raphael. Have you heard about Raphael? A great artist from the 16th century. And his depiction of this gospel, the Transfiguration, was known for many centuries as a masterpiece of his work. And I'm sure you've seen it somewhere displayed in your visual awareness where the Lord is there in a dazzling cloth, floating in the air like this. I'm not going to do it too well, but like this. 
and around him are Moses and Elijah. But then there's a cutoff, and below is the world. And so above that line is all bright and beautiful and white and sparkling and dazzling. And below is the image of the world. A little dark, a little chaotic. But on one side there, there's a a father and a son in the picture. And everybody uh, saying, hey, pay attention, look up there. Look at the transfigured Christ who will give you hope, who will give you healing, who will help you in your life to see goodness and beauty. And so that masterpiece, I invite you to go on Wikipedia tonight or on some site and see this beautiful picture by Raphael and get a sense of this majestic scene played out, this masterpiece of art. And how you and I are invited to place ourselves in this transfiguration experience of Jesus. Can you imagine yourself being with James, John, and Peter? And the Lord says, we're going up the mountain to pray. As we know so well, that means that something special is about to happen. When the Lord invites friends to go with them up the mountain to pray. And of course, at that moment... There is this awesome experience in front of them as Moses and Elijah appear. And that significance is that there's a connection now between the current events and the Old Testament. Isaiah, prophet. Moses, commandments. And how Jesus now is the fulfillment of the Old Testament how there's new life expressed there. And Peter, James, and John see that now expression, and they are amazed at what is happening. And they get a sense now that the Lord is with them and encourages them in their journey of faith as the Lord progresses to Jerusalem for his exodus. You saw that little word there in the gospel today, Exodus, his death. He is moving now from this world to the next. It's all tied in. And as they enter the cloud of prayer, they hear that voice spoken to them. Again, the same voice spoken to Jesus at his baptism. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. See all the connections in the scripture? And here, the phrase is spoken to them to remind them that they must listen to Jesus, his words, and follow him. And you and I are also invited to have this experience and to hear the Lord speak those words to us too. Listen to Jesus. Follow his pathway. And what do we have to hear from Jesus? First of all, first, I love you. I'm part of your life. I want, you, I want you to live joyfully in this world. And when times are tough, when there's challenges in our life, we all have them, that we don't give up, we persevere, and we keep on going. We hear the Lord say to us, I want to be part of your life. Through our baptisms, each one of us is invited to be part of God's life. In some moments, we're very close to God in prayer. Life is great. We sense God's holy presence in our life. Other times, we're not so close. And that's the value and beauty of Lent for us to have that inner insight to reconnect, to to recharge our spiritual batteries, to be more aware once again that God is here And God is constant in our life. For me, in our changing, chaotic world, that's a wonderful awareness to have, isn't it? That when things are so changeable and so challenging and so upsetting, that one constant always is God. And as you and I can really believe that and plug into that, wow, 
It makes a lot of difference in our life, how you and I view the world and how we view our life in the world. So we try as youngsters to have fun in high school and play sports and activities, have good friends, try to be kind to our friends and respectful to our parents and give our best effort every day. As adults, try to love our family, be a good friend to our neighbor, to care for the poor and needy, to live that Christian life well every day. And so we're called to have that vision of God in this world. Now in today's gospel, the disciples, Peter, John, and James, they thought that what they saw was the end point. As we heard in the gospel proclaimed, Peter still did not get it. With all his time spent with Jesus and all the good words, he still did not really have the whole thing together yet. He wanted to stay there and build a few tents and hang out for a while. But the Lord says, "Uh uh-uh, Peter, that's not what we're going to do. We have to leave, go down the mountain, resume our life, and keep going. What a great image of life for all of us, isn't it? And when you and I come here as Catholics to celebrate Eucharist, we, in a sense, climb the mountain of prayer. We come here to experience the epitome of God's love for us, God's presence in our life, Jesus, the Eucharist. Here as Catholics to come here, from all ages, all backgrounds, all life stories, but you know what? We're all united. For me, that, as a priest, that's so special to be aware of that we come here from all different backgrounds and life stories and areas of life. We come here united because we believe in God. We believe in God's love. We care for each other. And all of us, our backgrounds, our life stories, come as one to share this Christian exp- expression of God in our life. Whether we come here for communion or in a few short moments for a blessing today, we have that sense that God is here and God cares for us, that God loves us in our life. In this gospel story, Peter, James, and John were given a vision beyond that experience on the mountain. They had an experience that sent them into the world once again. Abraham, in the first reading, also had that same experience. They were given that vision of God's beneficence to them, God's blessing upon him and the people as they made a covenant. God saying to them, I am your God, you are my people forever. And that covenant transcends and progresses through all the centuries to the present moment here right now. God present to us, God with us, God blesses us. So my friends, this is a great gospel for this time of season of Lent. As the Lord was transfigured in their midst, transformation and new life, so you and I must have that same hope and that same prayer today, that all of us also are open to transformation, change, new life, growth, because we are people who hope. We are people who see goodness around us. We are people who never settle for mediocrity. We're always challenging to be our best for the world by who we are, what we give to our family and our friends, striving always to give our best. So my friends today, let us really cherish this time of prayer together. Just imagine that you are there going up the mountain today here at Eucharist listening to Jesus speak to you in your hearts. I love you. I care for you. And the Lord's saying, okay, we've got to go back into the world in a half hour or so and live our lives. We live, live our lives as we carry the Lord in our hearts, being kind to our spouse, being a good friend to our neighbor, to be respectful to the world, to let God work through us to give goodness in the world. What a blessing, what a gift we have as people of faith in this world. So my friends, God bless you today. May you shine forth that baptism glow, so to speak, of your faith. 
as the early Christians you know, were noted for, see how they love each other. See how they care for each other. See how they pray together. We do that here this afternoon as one body of believers, open to transformation, new life, and peace. May God bless all of us today to strive to live with God in our hearts every day. Let us now stand as you and I profess our faith together this day. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and visible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with their Father. For him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. My friends, confident in God's providence, let's now place our prayers and petition before our God this day. For Pope Francis, our bishops, and all who exercise authority in the church, May they be guided by the Spirit of God as they lead the faithful to a deeper knowledge of the mystery of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our gifts to the Catholic appeal will continue to put faith into action, providing support here at Sacred Hearts Parish as well as in our Catholic school and in our communities, especially for those in need, facing many challenges in these uncertain times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and all those who care for them, may God grant them healing, relief, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may the Holy Spirit enlighten our hearts as we seek to follow God and walk in his ways. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Marie Capiti, Michael DeModica, and Dorothy Towler, May they witness the glory of God in the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For William Bateman, who is especially remembered at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers and concerns we silently call to mind, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the Ukrainian people who are suffering dearly today, great hardship, may God bless them with hope and resilience and bless all peacekeepers in that neck of the woods of the world. May God bless them, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Almighty God, we ask you to listen to our prayers this afternoon. Bless all of us gathered here today, especially our young people for the future of the church. May God bless all with peace, hope, and new life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. I now invite two of our young friends, Grace and Josh, to bring forth our gifts to the altar. And our song during the preparation of the gifts is number 497. Transfigure us, O Lord, number 497. Oh, 
pray, my friends, that my sacrifice is will of God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse of our faults and sanctify your faithful people in body and mind for the celebration of these Paschal festivities. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For your will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as one voice. We pray together. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was entered to the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which you put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come home. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the clergy, religious, and all your faith-filled people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all have died in your mercy. 
We pray this day for Bill Bateman. Welcome, Bill, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, to Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. stand. As we gather our prayers together and pray in the words our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Grace grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may always free from sin and safe from all distress of life, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins when the faith of your church, and graciously grant her a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. So I turn to our family, our friends, and offer a sign of peace. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus, who brings us joy and peace and hope and new life in our hearts. Bless those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worried that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our song during communion is number 409, Lord, to whom shall we go? Number 409. Lord, to whom 
the road rise to meet you. May the wind be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rain fall softly on your fields and until We have a few announcements this evening. Next weekend, the Knights of Columbus are bringing to our parish an icon of St. Joseph, which will be on the altar during the Sunday Masses. We hope it is a prayerful tie-in to the year of St. Joseph, which recently concluded. For our Lenten act of almsgiving this week, we invite you to bring new twin bed sheets to benefit Emmaus House. They can be placed this weekend or next weekend in the basket in the back of the church. Our website got a makeover. Please check out the new and improved sacredheartsparish.com. It has all you loved about the old site, including live stream, the bulletin, and online giving, plus some great new features. Please join us for our Lenten year of the Eucharist retreat beginning tomorrow night and continuing through Tuesday night. Please consult the bulletin for more information. Cardinal Sean has authorized a special collection next weekend to help the people in Ukraine. The Archdiocese Collection will be sent to Catholic Relief Services, which will support the Ukrainian people. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you, Caroline, for those updates on parish life this Lenten season. Here's a word from me today. Uh, this is Commitment Weekend for the Catholic Appeal. Recall that last week, Ed Swider, the chairperson, spoke at all the masses, requesting your support of the appeal this year. I thank all those who brought their envelopes back today, those who missed last week, their envelopes on the back side of the pew for you to take home this day to fill out. As you know, the appeal supports the day-to-day -day work and operations of our parish in so many ways. The appeal supports programs that enrich our parish life. The appeal supports those in need throughout our archdiocese and our communities, those who are sadly forgotten by the world. So your support is very important and, and wel welcomed. So please pass in your donation envelope this week uh, or next week when you come to Mass, bring your envelope back and place it in the offertory basket next week. I really appreciate your support. Last year we made our goal very easily and uh, we did receive an, a, a, a rebate given our, our goodness. So I thank you in advance for your generosity and supporting me and helping us reach our goal this year. And don't forget this year, this weekend, clocks forward, right? Sadly, we're losing our sleep, so uh, hopefully we'll get it back in the fall. <laughs> or a nap tomorrow, naps are good. So think about that tomorrow, wonderful. But thanks for all your support. Boys and girls in our conference class, want to stand for a blessing today, please? We're so proud of you and all your good you do are here. So, you to send forth blessing upon these youngsters in our confirmation program year one. 
they and their fellow students are journeying these two years to be open to the Spirit, to draw closer to God in prayer, in activity, to be aware of our Catholic faith and its beauty. We promise, boys and girls, to pray for you these two years and to guide you and support you in your journey of faith. May God bless you and your families who support you in this journey. And all your catechists, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, have a seat. Well done. And again, welcome to the Hibernians today, my friends who are here today to celebrate the great month of March uh, in honor of St. Patrick. So thank you and welcome everybody. Let's now stand for our final prayers. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers, even now, of the things of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our sending forth hymn is number 398, Be Thou My Vision, number 398. 